on this podcast episode, I am guiding directly a member of the Secure Parent Collective. Her name is Adrienne. She has three children. One of them is just six year old, and she's struggling to stay present, connected, and not reactive during homework time. She feels that homework time is the time of day that just creates a lot of power struggles between her and her six year old. So if you want to stay for this coaching session, I encourage you to stay on this podcast episode. But before we go there, it is Mother's Day week and HIC Parenting and myself have a Mother's Day present for you, our listeners of the Parenting with Understanding podcast. So just imagine that you are feeling overwhelmed with your kids, that you're about to yell, and then you are able to plug in the right meditation playlist that is going to calm down your nervous system and breathe life and peace into your system so you can reconnect with your children in a calm, assertive way. Yes, we created a complete playlist to help you calm down in those high stressful moments with your kids. And this is a Mother's Day gift that we have for you. So this is a paid product that right now we are giving you, gifting you. Yes, it is a free thing to celebrate you for all the hard work that you've been doing, becoming a secure parent, understanding yourself helping your children, transferring from all parenting tactics to a more respectful approach. You are doing a lot of hard work and we want to provide you with a gift that is going to calm you down, that is going to ground you and is going to give you the strength that you need to go back to your children from a present, grounded way. So to access this gift, this playlist of meditation for parents who want to be secure parents, who want to become parents for their children, all you have to do is open the description of this podcast episode and you can give us your best email, phone number, and name, and we will send you the playlist for free. This is a Mother's Day gift that we have for you. Okay, so let's move on to help Adrienne during homework time and how she can feel more connected and assertive with her child, her six-year-old who struggles to complete homework. So I am one of those parents that I can admit um, a lot of the parenting tension um, or issues that I have with my kid also resides in myself. Um, And over the course of, you know, two years, my son is six, but over the last two years, it's issues have really gotten out of hand. I've done what I feel is necessary to get him help and completely neglected the fact that, again, a lot of the issues reside in myself, whether it's through generational trauma or, as you were speaking about earlier, the power over parentship that I grew up with and that I'm now reflecting. So I think, you know, from a six-year-old perspective, he's doing everything he can, going to counseling and, you know, with his own developmental needs communicating how he can the best he can but now I need to focus on myself because nothing is going to change you know without us both collaborating on how to make this better okay you know something that what's your name by the way oh my name is Adriana Adriana you know I noticed I noticed that you're an aware parent yeah you're an aware yes because unaware parents they think their children are the problem and they need to fix their children. So the fact that you are coming from a place of awareness of there are things in me and that might be impacting my relationship with my child and his behaviors, that lets me know that you, number one, you're a great parent, you're an aware parent, and you are closer to become a secure parent. So the way that we're going to structure this is I'm going to ask you questions and dive a little deeper to see what your subconscious beliefs and feelings are. Because from there, we parent. From there, we react. First of all, I want to know what the experience is. Could you please walk me through quickly through a scenario where you get to that point of reactivity 
and not being able to stay present with your son. For example, homework. He's in kindergarten, but he does have reading um, and spelling twice a week. And I initially start off by being, you know, very level with him, communicating with him. You know, as long as you focus, you can get this done really quickly. You're smart. You're proud of, like, you should be proud of yourself. You can do this. And I soon, basically, as he shows any sort of, like, delay or I don't want to do this or I can't do this, that's when I feel triggered the most because I know he can do it. And on top of that, you know, I have several other things that I could be doing as a mom. I've got two other children as well, uh, a one-year-old and a one-month-old. So that's, you know, extra stress when there's one baby crying here and the other baby wants your attention. So it kind of just all boils over, but the only one who can get the, I guess, directive of like my anger and my rage in that moment is him. Okay. That's right, the one-year-old or the one-month-old. Okay, I hear you. So right before your range when he's having a hard time keeping his engagement during homework time and he's not doing what he you know he can do what's your feeling inside how do you feel inside right before your rage i guess in those moments i just think it's a problem like oh no here's another obstacle here's another thing for me to have to work through or work over with him and the way I feel in that moment is it's just adding something extra to my plate that I have to worry about in addition to, you know, other mom responsibilities, as I said, with the one-year-old and the one-month-old, laundry, showers, and everything Okay. Else. So if you were to say, to name one or two feelings, what would they be? Overwhelmed, for sure. And, um, I mean, I'm not proud to say it, but just bothered, you know, like inconvenienced kind of. Okay, kind of dread, like, ah, oh, again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. inconvenience, dread. Okay, if that inconvenience had thoughts, <laughs> if that inconvenience had a little voice telling you things, what is that inconvenience telling you right now? I guess I would say something along the lines of, like, oh, here's another issue we have to work on. Here's another zero to a hundred argument that we're going to have to fight or... Mm -hmm. Here's another conflict another is one. coming. It's kind of like a warning sign of conflict is coming. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does that feel true to you that underneath that dread, there is a sense of fear of conflict is coming, of anxiety that conflict is coming? Yeah. And I can almost always count on it, unfortunately, that there will be some sort of conflict when we sit down to start homework. Okay. I try to avoid it, like I said, when we first sit down to be as level-headed with him mm -hmm. and say, okay, well, let's just do this. We can focus. We can get through this together. And I know I'm probably the one that's not keeping up on my part of that deal to stay level mm -hmm. and to, to be the safe mm -hmm. space for him to still engage in the ways that he can. Mm -hmm. So you're struggling to stay present because you are traveling to the future, anticipating conflict. And I'm very curious about what you relate to conflict. I actually live with my parents. Mm -hmm. I'm living in my childhood home right now. Mm -hmm. And at the same exact table, at the same exact spot mm -hmm. that we sit down to do homework is where I was at 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. And it, it was the same thing, you mm -hmm. know, tears when we would sit down to do homework because I couldn't spell a word that we had been working on for an entire week. I could do it before, but I can't do it now. And it's so silly because, you know, speaking it out loud, it's like, oh, you know, it's reflective. You should be more understanding or I should be more understanding, you know, having been in his shoes. But it's, I don't know, a different perspective now as a mom, having the other added responsibilities that I have. Okay. So you are projecting your childhood onto the current experience. So this is why I see, uh, Adrian, I see that your desire to stay connected and level is right now overpowered by the anticipation and fear that you had growing up of what it meant to sit down and do homework. Because when you sat down to do homework growing up, you anticipated a conflict that was not related with safety. You learned that conflict 
or struggling with something or being stuck at something or needing help with something equals lack of safety because you were met with unsafe responses. You were met with unsafe confrontation from your parents. Possibly you were met with blame, shame, and fear as well. So right now the dread is not that your child is not doing homework. The dread is the projection of the fear that you had growing up. Uh, I relate struggling with homework with lack of safety. So you're anticipating that, and from that anticipation and anxiety and fear is that your reactivity comes in. So if not your son struggling to do homework, is your inner child trying to keep you safe because conflict always turns into a very unsafe thing growing up. <laughs> That's the first step to understand the pattern. Because there are no deep breaths that you could take if you are relating conflict with lack of safety. So the way to move forward is for Adrian, the adult, to take charge of Adrian, the inner child. Right now, Adrian, the inner child, is anticipating conflict to be a really unsafe thing and not seeing that your son needing help, your son being stuck with homework, Conflict with your son does not equal lack of safety. It does not equal that. Yes, it might be inconvenient, but it does not equal lack of safety. Okay? Yeah. So I have a question for you. At that moment, when your son is struggling to make sense of a word or to do homework in some way, what do you wish you would have gotten when you were at the same place that your son is right now. I would have wished that um, there would be some like patience, obviously, and understanding of where I was coming from in that moment, whether I was just being distracted or tired or whatever, you know, reason I was struggling in that given moment to have some sort of understanding for that. Now you said what your son needs. He needs patience. And he needs understanding of the why. Would you allow me to educate you on yeah. the types of engagement when it comes to homework? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you said something in the beginning that really caught my attention. You said he's able to do it. So being able to do something and having the motivation and the engagement to do it are two different things. I know I should go to bed early. But instead, I choose to scroll down and watch Netflix until 12 a.m. So I have the physical capacity to do it, but somehow I'm choosing to do the opposite. With your son, it's the same thing. He may have the brain capacity to do those additions and subtractions that he sees on the sheet, but his emotional engagement is not there. Because according to research, the only way that a child's learning centers in their brain is awake or on is if their connection center of the brain, their limbic system is on. So he will be as connected to the homework as he is to himself and to you. Now, I understand it's hard. It's hard because you are coming from a very traumatic experience growing up. And as well, you're right now gaining understanding of it is not that he won't to do it. He can do it if he doesn't feel connected. Okay. And I see that you have other things to take care of. You have other little ones. So now I have a question for you. At that moment, how can you support yourself to stay present in the truth that being stuck with homework and struggling to complete a task, a homework task, is safe? And how can you support your child for him to feel empowered to do it more or less independently? Because he might not be able to do it all the way independently, but you can train him to do it more or less independently. So you can take care of the other kids. So you're saying, how can I provide a safe space? For how can you? No, for you. The safe space is that the only way we can provide safe space for our children is if we can provide a safe space for ourselves first. 
So the first question is, how can you support yourself to stay grounded in your Adrian adult self? So if you don't go back to the inner child Adrian that is connecting, being stuck with homework with lack of safety. Is there any mantra or anything that you can do to support yourself at that moment? I guess just having kind of like a mental reminder that I don't need to be in fight or flight mode for homework. You know, I am safe. My kids are safe. Although mm. laundry's not getting done in that specific moment and it's piling up. We're all fine, breathing, mm -hmm. fed, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, basic needs and safety, everything's fine, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I get it, because I'm a stay-at-home mom, too, so you kind of look over, and at the same time, that hypervigilance of everything has to be taken care of right now, I need to do all these, I need to do that, comes from the same room. Uh, you're not being able to perform in school activities and being punished. So now you have household activities when you see them piling up and then you punish yourself with guilt or with anxiety that I need to get it done to prove myself that I'm a good mom or I'm a good housewife or I'm a good, you know? So yeah. it comes from the same fear. That's very eye-opening, that statement, that I punish myself with guilt and anxiety. That's very true. Is it true that if the laundry stays in the laundry machine and doesn't go to the dryer for that day, is it true that you're a bad mom? No, of course not. Is it true that you can dedicate five extra minutes to your child? Yes. Yeah. So what's coming up for you as we process this? Again, as you said, to kind of create a safe space for myself, but to also kind of reset my mindset in terms of like priority and the purpose behind me wanting to do these things, I guess, because ultimately I don't want to continue a cycle of trauma or pain or anxiety in my son when it comes to just sitting and doing homework and he's only in kindergarten. You know, we're not competing for, you know, something super competitive that's going to map out the rest of his life. And, you know, same with me, as you said, nothing's going to change if, you know, the dishes pile up or the laundry piles up. What's going to make more of an impact is me dedicating those five extra minutes to my son rather than rushing through it, creating a bigger conflict just to make sure that the laundry is done or the, the, the cold are put away. Okay. And I wonder what the expectations are with your son. Because his attention span is three to five minutes per year of age. So he won't be able to sit down to do homework for a long time. He won't be. If he's disengaged after 10 minutes, it makes sense to me. Completely makes sense. <laughs> so homework time might need to be broken down in three sessions. Or just to do a very short. Like, ah, you did one page. Okay, great. Go to play. <laughs> So I wonder what the expectation is. Like, we need to stay here until it's done. Or I'm following your engagement cues, and I see you're already disengaged, going under the table. That means you're done. I guess I was just setting the same expectation that I had, again, as a kid, which was, we're not moving until you get this done, kind of nope. a mindset. But now that you say it, I mean, he has a week to do two assignments. We definitely could break it up into you know, a little bit every single day if that one helps him stay more engaged in with the, you know, within his time frame. Another thing that I see is that that place gives you a lot. It's not even the interaction with your son, but you said that that place is a triggering place for you because it's the place where you got punished for doing homework. You're more prone to traveling back in your wound being there. So I wonder if we can find a more neutral place that you can start creating positive connections in your brain, in your child's learning experience. Maybe it could be in the backyard. It could be a little nook in his bedroom or somewhere else. Yeah, I can explore that with him for sure. Okay, so the invitation is that when you start to see the anxiety racing up, for you to remind yourself of the truth, that it is safe for your son to have conflict and not being able to understand homework, or it is safe the interaction that you have with your son, okay? Number two, 
the revisit the expectation. What is my son telling me? What is his behavior telling me? That he's done, that he's disengaged, that it's time to move on? Okay. And move on, like follow his cues. And number three, follow your own cues. If you feel yourself dysregulated, then use something that calms you down. It could be going outside. It could be, how I said, changing the place where you do homework with your son. It could be taking a few deep breaths and reminding yourself of your expansive belief that you are a parent who is helping her son and you are not little Adrian struggling to meet up adults' expectations. And this might just, again, be going back to like my wrong way of thinking, but if I follow his cues to you know, his disengagement and things like that. Does that mean I'm like weak kind of giving into just letting him do what he wants? Because that's mm-hmm. also kind of what I'm okay. trying to avoid is like him just kind of trying to get out of it. Okay. Okay. So children are wired. Their brains are wired for learning. Like a child is not born with a brain that doesn't want to take on the world. What makes children hate school and homework is basically the experience, the connections they have, the experience they have while they are learning. So if you see him disengage, he's giving you a message of, I either need a break or I need you to engage me in a different way or I need support understanding what I'm trying to learn right now, okay? So when you're saying, hey, does this come from my old pattern, my default thinking that if he doesn't do what I say, the time I say it, then I'm weak and I'm letting him walk all over me. Is that true? I want to say no. (laughs) I'm waiting for you to say no so I feel validated. Does that feel true to you? No. What does feel true to you? He's just a kid, and I can't ex- I can't expect him to meet some sort of mold that is set to a standard that he can't realistically ever meet, that nobody realistically can ever meet. Mm-hmm. Is it true that children can walk all over us? Does he have the capacity as a six-year-old to walk all over an adult? He should not, no. He doesn't even know what that is. His brain does not understand manipulation. That comes in teenager years. He's just trying to meet his needs and communicate them the best way he can, which is through behaviors all the time. Mm-hmm. So Adrian, what was the main takeaway from this time with you? Unlearning old habits and learning to create and prioritize a safe space for myself as an adult first, and then the safe space for my son eventually. You got it. And in the Secure Parent Collective, you have my ongoing guidance. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. That was the session with Adrienne. I cannot wait to see her transformation in the Secure Parent Collective as we keep helping her understand her triggers, manage her anxiety so she can be present with her kids. If this podcast episode gave you a light bulb, or helped you in any way understand yourself a lot more, my encouragement is to leave us a positive review. Open the description and leave us a positive review. Remember to download your playlist, your Mother's Day gift, to help you calm down during stressful moments. This is a meditation playlist that you can plug in in those really hard moments to calm down your nervous system and help you stay connected with your children. The link is in the description of this podcast episode. If you are watching us from YouTube, it is on the description of the YouTube video. If you are watching us from TikTok, Instagram is in the link in my bio. And the last thing that I want to tell you is that remember that it only takes understanding of yourself and of your children to transform your parenting. I'll see you next time. (music) 